what we'll consider now in the next subsection are lag systems and lag systems are really first order systems that are in series right so you have a number of first order systems and if you put them in series like this well you have an end order lag system each first order comes with its lag time constant right and if you have n first orders in series you only have an end order lag system so over here you have a second order lag system and you can see it as well kp over t lag 1 s plus 1 that's the first first order block and then it is followed by a second first order system this one has gain 1 and it has time constant t lag 2 s plus 1 right and what you can do of course is compute the step response of this second order lag system and you can do it exactly you just have to compute the response in the s domain so it's times one over s here right then you do the partial fraction expansion here we assume that the two lag time constants are different right if they are not well you have to redo the calculations and you'll have a different partial fraction expansion but assuming that these time constants are different well you obtain your partial fraction expansion and then you do the inverse laplace transform and you obtain the time domain response this time domain response as you can see here is for your information only so instead of using the exact step response what we'll do is use information about the step response at the origin right we'll use information on the output and on its slope and then use information when t tends to infinity and of course this will result from the initial and final value theorems we had seen in the previous section that if you particularize the response to a step response it is possible to obtain the step response at the origin and information on its slope using this formula over here if you apply this to the second order lag system you will see that the response at the origin is zero but that the slope at the origin is zero as well okay so this is the main difference with the step response of a first order system because for a first order system we had seen that the slope was the gain divided by the time constant and of course the steady state value in this unit step response is kp right kp is the static gain you can see that if you replace s by zero this is indeed the static gain and we'll use this information to draw the step response of this two lag time constants second order system what we'll consider now is a lag system with three lag time constant so you can see it as follows so you have three first order systems in series right the first one has a gain one and a time constant of 10 seconds so the transfer function of this first order system is 1 over 10 s plus 1 we have a first order system in series the gain is again one and the time constant is five seconds so this is one over five s plus one and then we have a third first order system in series and this one has a time constant a lag time constant of 
one second. So the transfer function is one over s plus one, right? So the overall transfer function is, of course, 10 s plus one, five s plus one, and then s plus one. Okay, but you can view it as three first order systems in series. Here you have MV, and what we'll do is look at the response of the first order system. We'll look at the response of the second order system. So this is this system over here, and we'll look at the response of this third order system. So this is PV3, right? Well, PV1. This is the step response. Okay, MV is shown here in blue. Well, PV1 is the step response of a first order system. And you can clearly see here that you have a slope of KP over T lag one. It's non-zero. And well, at steady state, well, you have a value of KP, right? In this case, one right and now if we look at the step response of the second order system and this is what we have considered in the previous slide you can see indeed that the response the step response at the origin is zero but now that the well, slope at the origin is also zero so there is a well big difference between a step response of a first order system and a second order system in the sense that this second order lag system will have a slope at the origin that is zero okay of course it will also settle out when t tends to infinity to a value that is kp okay and which is one in this case if you consider the response the step response of this third order lag system you can see now that well not only the slope will be zero at the origin but also the second derivative will be zero and this is why the step response will becomes more flat at the origin and this is introducing this apparent dead time that i've spoken about Note that you can see the response in magenta as the response of a first order system with time constant five seconds to the input shown in green. Similarly, you can see the response in orange as the response of a first order system with lag time constant one second to the input shown in magenta. Or you can see the response in orange as the response of a second order lag system with time constants one second and five seconds to the input in green. We'll now have a look at the frequency response of this third order lag system, so the Bode diagram. And as you can see, I've left a slide with an empty Bode diagram, so you can print it out and try to find this frequency response by yourself. What you can see over here is the frequency response of a first order system, so it corresponds to this transfer function here gain one and time constant is equal to 10 seconds so the cutoff frequency will be in one over t lag one so this is here at 0.1 radians per second and you can see the frequency response so the gain as a function of frequency and here in dashed lines you can see the approximation right and here you have the phase shift, a phase shift of 45 degrees at the cutoff frequency. And this phase shift will tend to minus 90 degrees for high frequencies and to zero for low frequencies. Well, let us now have a look at the frequency response of the second order lag system. And it has time constants 10 seconds and 5 seconds, right? 
So the individual first order systems have body diagrams that are given here in green. So this corresponds to 1 over 10s plus 1. This is the body diagram of the first order system 1 over 5s plus 1. As you can see here, the cutoff frequency is in 0.2 radians per second. So that's 1 over 5, right? And here you have the associated phase shift. This is corresponding to 1 over 10s plus 1. And this one is corresponding to 1 over 5 s plus 1 and as you can see here at around 0.2 radians you have a phase shift of minus 45 degrees so now we can have a look at the body diagram here of this second order lag systems and what you simply have to do is add things both in this top part of the body diagram that looks at the gain here in db and for the phase shift so if you take the dashed line here right in magenta and you add the full line in green this is what you obtain right and you can also use the approximation right with the approximation you can see that well it is first the first lag time constant of 10 seconds that is acting so you have something like this right and then here you have the second lag time constant is adding and this is how the approximation looks like right and for the phase shift of course you can add things as well and this is what you obtain and as you can see at the low frequencies you'll have a small phase shift at around zero degrees and at the high frequencies this will tend to a phase shift of minus 180 degrees you can see here that the slopes of the individual first order systems are both minus 20 dbs per decade so above here this second cutoff frequency well you have here a slope of minus 40 dbs per decade we can now have a look at the body diagram of the third order lag system. So it's 1 over 10s plus 1 times 5s plus 1 times s plus 1. And this body diagram is here shown in orange, right? So what we'll do is again take the individual body diagrams of the first order system with their approximation so this corresponds to 1 over 10 s plus 1 cutoff frequency over here this corresponds to 1 over 5 s plus 1 cutoff frequency at 0.2 radians per second and this corresponds to 1 over s plus 1 and the cutoff frequency is over here right so if you want to obtain the body diagram for the gain what you have to do is add the full line in green the dashed line in magenta and the dashed line in orange and this is what you obtain again what you can do is look at the approximation so here it's 0 db at the first cutoff frequency we have a slope of minus 20 dbs at the second per decade at the second cutoff frequency we have a slope of minus 40 dbs per decade and then from this third cutoff frequency we have a slope of minus 60 dbs so at the high frequency since the individual first order systems have a slope of minus 20 dbs per decade well we'll have here a slope of minus 60 dbs per decade you can see here the well phase shift associated with each individual first order system uh, again here this is 1 over 10 s plus 1 here we have a cutoff frequency of 0 0.1 so this one corresponds to minus 45 degrees this corresponds to 
1 over 5 s plus 1 and this corresponds to 1 over s plus 1 so you can see here that at the cutoff frequencies 0.2 and 1 right we have minus 45 degrees and if you add this you obtain the phase shift of this third order lag system and well at the higher frequencies well the phase shift will go to minus 270 degrees so that's three times minus 90 degrees well in summary this is what you obtain the gain is one so at the low frequencies you can see here that the static gain is one since we had at the low frequencies a gain of zero db the cutoff frequencies are respectively 1.1 radian per second 0.2 radian per second and 1 radian per second and above this third cutoff frequency well you can see here that we'll have a slope of minus 60 db per decade for this third order lag system well at the high frequencies so above the far above the third cutoff frequency well the phase shift will tend to minus 270 degrees in this subsection we'll talk about lead lag systems and lead lag systems are processes well there is a gain they are first order so there is a lag time constant but there is also a zero so we'll write it as the lead a time constant the lead time constant we'll talk about this later right so you can see here that the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator we'll say that this transfer function has a relative degree zero and this is really a lead lag system it is rare to see a process that will exhibit this type of lead lag behavior but many controllers exhibit or include this lead lag behavior what you'll see for processes is that you'll have a lead lag behavior associated with a first order transfer function right so we'll have a t lag one and we'll have a second time constant and these this is an example of a second order process with two lag time constants and one lead time constant and this type of process will be tackled in this course and an example is this one over here in lead lag type systems two phenomena are typically occurring in parallel and this is what we'll illustrate using this example so in this process you have a stream of hot product that needs to be cooled and therefore you can use a heat exchanger and in this heat exchanger you have a flow of cooling water okay by adjusting the position of this bypass valve you can influence the temperature at the output of the system so for instance if you increase the positioning of the bypass value so you increase the opening you'll have less flow through the heat exchanger and the temperature will drop so we will assume that in the time frame that is shown over here we are in steady state so that all transients have disappeared and therefore at the output in the corresponding time frame well the temperature is constant right we'll also assume that the flow of product is constant and that the flow of cooling water is constant so what we'll do is at some stage open the bypass valve and look at the dynamics from bypass valve to output temperature well you can see that if you open the bypass valve 
the flow through the bypass will increase okay the products that will be flowing will have the same temperature of course but the influence on the output temperature will be a sharp increase in temperature with a time constant that will be very small right so what will happen also is that since there is less flow through the heat exchanger the smaller flow through the heat exchanger will cause also a drop in temperature right but this time constant here will be much larger than here okay since there is less stream of hot product through the heat exchanger you can cool it better but this will influence will be slow so the time constant will be higher and of course there will be a decrease in temperature on the resulting temperature so this output temperature is composed of two effects a quick effect that comes from the opening of the bypass and the fact that now you have more warm hot products at the output and a second slower effect because of the fact that there is less product through the heat exchanger and that therefore the product that will come out of the heat exchanger will be colder okay and if you add these two effects this is what you have okay so you can clearly see here that there are two effects in parallel and this step response here is typically the step response of a lead lag type system with two lag time constants and one lead time constant so what we're doing here is combine two first order dynamics but we combine them in parallel okay so we have first order one first order two they receive the same mv right and the outputs are added right to obtain pv and of course here you have a time constant t lag one again kp one a time constant t lag two and a gain k p2 and if you go through the calculations and the calculation is not really important the message is important well you can see that the equivalent dynamics from mv to pv is that of a system that is described like this right it has two time constants so it's a second order system right the two lag time constants are the lag time constants of the original systems that are here in parallel but there is a lead time constant that is appearing right so if you see a transfer function like this one with two lag time constants and one lead time constant this is what is indicated over here this means that in the background you have two first order processes in parallel such a transfer function with two lag time constants and one lead time constant can be viewed as a lead lag system so this is one lead time constant and one lag time constant in series with a first order system as indicated in the title of the slide well, what happens here is that a first order system right is combined with a static gain kp2 again the two systems receive the same input right and the two outputs are added to obtain pv right this one as time constant t lag simply and this one as gain kp1 
right and if you look at the input output dynamics and you go through the calculations right this is what you obtain this is what we call a lead lag system okay so it has one lag time constant and one lead time constant and of course we see here that the relative degree is zero the degree of the numerator is one and the degree of the denominator is one right so we can kind of see from the transfer function that there must be a so-called direct feed through a direct influence from mv and pv this is of course visible in here where is the direct feed through it's over here of course so if you work with a lead lag system and this is really what we call a lead lag system well we have we work with a system with relative degree zero there is a direct feed through and in the background there must be a first order system in parallel with a gain and there are very few processes that behave like this but this lead lag system is very often used in control in a PID controller in feed forward in internal model control and so forth you can of course compute the impulse response and the step response of this lead lag system exactly these responses are for your information but they give you well insights right well to compute the impulse response x of s is equal to one so we have to take the inverse laplace transform of the transfer function by definition and to take this inverse laplace transform what we have to do is a euclidean division so that you end up with this description here of the transfer function and if you now take the impulse response well you can see here that there is a direct feed through term so if you put an impulse at the input you'll find this impulse multiplied by this gain this is this term and this second term will provide the impulse response of a first order type system and this is this response over here so what is important to see is that in a lead lag system well there is a direct feed through term well again for the step response we can take the step response x of s here is now one over s you take this transfer function you obtain this response partial fraction expansion inverse laplace transform and this is what you obtain and this is the response that you'll find in the textbook i like this expression of the transfer function because you can see it as the well step response of a gain plus the step response of a first order system so here is the term that comes from the direct feed through right it's a step and then you have the step response of this second term here it's the step response of a first order system and again you can see that there is a direct feed through term remember that if you consider a process with a transfer function that is given over here lead lag system one lead time constant and one lag time constant in fact it results from two systems that are in parallel a first order system and a static gain and it's of course this static gain that will provide this direct feed return if you consider this direct feed through term that we had obtained by considering this transfer function and you inject kp in here and tlead you will see that this is indeed equal to kp2 the static gain here of this process that is in parallel to the first order system except that here this direct feed through term is obtained directly from the lead lag transfer function instead of computing the step response exactly you can use the initial and final value theorems we had specialized these theorems to the step response in section 2
okay so you can obtain information on the step response at the origin and information when t to, tends to infinity so in steady state if we look at the step response at the origin we have to take the transfer function and let the variable s tend to infinity and what you obtain over here is without a surprise kp t lead over t lag this is this direct feed return you can also obtain information on the slope by taking this formula and this is what you obtain in steady state of course you have to take the transfer function and let s tend to zero and this of course corresponds to well, the static gain of the process since we consider a unit step response notice that when t lead is equal to zero the step response at the origin is zero and the slope becomes kp over t lag so this is consistent with what we had found for the first order system notice that we knew already that the static gain can be read from the top part of the body diagram so the gain as a function of frequency when you consider small frequencies okay so omega tending to zero but you can also read the direct feed through term from the top part of the body diagram so again the gain as a function of frequencies but now you have to take high values of frequency so omegas that tend to infinity let us now look at the step response of the lead lag system so we have a transfer function kp t lead s plus one over t lag s plus one and we'll fix kp to one and t lag to three so we end up with t lead s plus one over three s plus one right and we'll consider three cases t lead is equal to one t lead is equal to nine and t lead is equal to minus one okay so what is in common of course is the steady state situation right we have a unit step response at the input we have a unit step in blue here so in steady state well the step response will settle out at kp so one and this is what you see over here and at the origin remember that the y and this is for a step here huh? at the origin is kp t lead over t lag right and in our case it's well t lead over three right with a t lead of one so this is indeed one over three here right direct feed through term okay and then well the response of the first order system and this is what you obtain you can already imagine what will happen for t lead is equal to nine right will have something that will go up to the value of three and then go down and when the lead is negative well you'll have an inverse response and this is what i'll show next of course in this case here we considering the lead positive and negative the lag of course has to be positive okay because the pole of the system is in minus one over t lag for the system to be stable we have to consider t lag positive considering t lag negative well doesn't make any sense because you would have an unstable step response and here you can see indeed that the step responses that correspond to t lead is equal to nine and t lead is equal to minus one correspond to what we had found intuitively right well a negative t lead will always produce an inverse step response and this is 
the case when in the transfer function kp they lead over the lag s plus one we have a zero and the zero here is in minus one over the lead is to the right of the imaginary axis so here in orange we have a situation where the pole is of course stable right it's in minus a third but the zero since the lead is negative is in one right and when you have zeros to the right of the imaginary axis well you have an inverse step response what we'll do now is kind of look at the frequency response of our lead lag system so we'll assume here that the lead lag has a gain of one so let's write it down this is the transfer function the lead s plus one over t lag s plus one and in order to obtain the body diagram of course we are working with building blocks and there is one building block that we already have we have the body diagram of one over t lag s plus one right and this is the first order system right and we will view this transfer function as one over t lag s plus one times t lead s plus one even if in practice obviously this is not going to be implemented this way right so what we'll do now is look at the Bode diagram of a lead time constant alone even in in practice a lead time constant is never used alone right once we have obtained the body diagram of t lead s plus one we can construct the body diagram of the lead lag system well to obtain the body diagram we need to construct the module as a function of frequency and the argument as a function of frequency we consider the transfer function this one over here on the j omega axis right this is done this way and one way to obtain the module and the argument is kind of obtain the real part and the imaginary part which is kind of very obvious in this case and then we construct the module and this is what we obtain right so it's a square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared that's for the module and the argument is simply the arc tangent of the imaginary part over the real part well there are some similarities with the Bode diagram or with the frequency response of the first order system and uh, we'll write the transfer function here p of s for a first order system and i will do it for a static gain of one so we'll have one over t lag s plus one right and if you look at the corresponding values so the module first order j omega what you will have here is one over the square root of one plus omega square t lag squared right and for the argument you'll have something like this so you'll have the same kind of formula but with a minus sign arc tangent well write it in english tangent right of omega t lag right so you can see that in the Bode diagram since let us look at here at the module since we're working with dbs right you can kind of see that the module 
of the first order system and the module of the lead system will have similar body diagrams in terms of the module except that they will be mirrored remember that the log 10 of 1 over x is equal to minus the log 10 of x right so you can kind of see that the Bode diagram in terms of the module of a lead system will be that of a first order system with same time constant but that is mirrored with respect to the real axis right and you'll have something similar for the phase shift right if the lead is positive well you will have the same kind of frequency response but mirrored with respect to the real axis if the lead is negative uh, if the lead is negative over here the lead negative well then you can rewrite this as minus the arc tangent of omega absolute value of the lead and then if the lead is negative well you'll have the same kind of behavior as that of a first order system in terms of the phase shift if the lead is positive well then you'll have this mirroring effect we can obtain this frequency response of this lead system in a more intuitive fashion so we replace s by j omega and this is what we obtain so we can again consider three situations a small frequency with respect to one over t lead here in first instance we'll consider t lead positive and then you can see that the first term will be dominating so the transfer function evaluated on the j omega axis is approximately one so this means a module of one and a phase shift of zero degrees if you're far above one over t lead well it's the second term that is dominating right and then the module is increasing with frequencies and the argument is 90 degrees right and if you're at the frequency one over t lead when then this transfer function evaluated on the j omega axis is 1 plus j so this you can rewrite as square root of 2 exponential of j by over 4 and you have a module of 2 and a phase lead of 45 degrees right so you can kind of see that if you compare this with 1 over 1 plus j omega t lag and you would say t lag is equal to t lead well that you have this kind of mirroring effect you can see this very clearly from the arguments right and for the module you have this one over x relation and remember that since we are working on a scale that is in dBs this will cause this mirroring effect around the real axis if we now consider this lead system but with the time constant negative right we can evaluate the transfer function on the j omega axis and this is what we obtain and to make things simple you can rewrite this as follows this one is negative so we put a minus sign here and we replace here t lead by the absolute value of t lead so this is equivalent but now it's kind of easy to see that well as far as the module is concerned you have the same well modules as before but everywhere where you had t lead you have to replace by the absolute value of t lead right and you have a change of sign in the argument because of this minus sign over here well we'll now 
consider the combination of a first order system and a lead system and this leads to a lead lag system with transfer function kp the lead s plus one over the lag s plus one so what we can do is look at the behavior when s tends to zero right if we call this p of s well then p of zero will tend to kp and this is the static gain and this is what you're reading over here in the body diagram of the gain and you have to take frequencies that tend to zero right and we can consider also the situation where s tends to infinity this is the high frequency gain and this is going to lead to p at infinity and this is going to be well kp the lead over the lag right so this is the high frequency gain and this is this direct feed through that we have been talking about before and this one you're going to read in the gain and the top part of the body diagram when the frequencies tend to high values well let us look at this lead lag system and i'll rewrite the transfer function over t lag s plus one and we'll consider this situation over here the gain is one so you can see here indeed at the low frequencies that the gain is zero dp so what will act first is the lag time constant okay so this is here one over t lag right and here you see the frequency response of one over t lag s plus one and here the associated phase shift right with the approximation in sine and here again you have the approximation in sine right and in one over t lead t lead is point one so 1 over the lead it's indeed in 10 radians per second well you have the lead that is acting and you can see here its frequency response here the approximation in sine and you can see here that you have this kind of mirroring effect with respect to the real axis right if you would have had a first order system behavior with constant t lead well you would have had exactly this behavior but mirror it okay so you can see here that in the high frequencies you'll have this slope of well 20 dbs per decade and here you have the associated phase shift in magenta in the high frequencies well the phase lead will be 90 degrees and here you see the approximation now it's just a matter of adding the effects of the lead system and the effects of the lag system and you obtain here in magenta the frequency response of the lead lag system the lines in sign will give you an approximation of this frequency response very important is that at the low frequency so when s is tending to zero right you have kp this is the static gain and you can read it over here right so you can see that since this is real here we have a phase shift of zero and kp is equal to one so a gain of zero db at the low frequencies you can also have a look at the high frequency gain and this is the limit when s tends to infinity of p of s and this will be kp t lead over t lag and in this case this will be of course 
point one. And if you look at it in dBs, of course, this is minus 20 dBs, right? And this is indeed what you've got. This is also a real number, right? So the phase shift is zero. This is because the transfer function P of S, Kp T lead S plus one over T lag S plus one has a relative degree zero right so there is a high frequency gain that is different from zero as you can see we'll now consider a lead lag system but in this case here t lead is higher as t lag so what happens is that the lead action or the lead system is acting before the lag system so here now this is one over the lead at one radiant per second and this is one over t lag at 10 radians per second this is the effect of the lead should be familiar by now and this is the effect of the lag Again, it's just a matter of adding the effects of the lead system and the lag system to obtain the frequency response of the lead lag system shown here in magenta. And you can obtain the approximation in sign. So again, we can see here that at the low frequencies, we can see that we have the static gain in this case a gain of 0 db and a phase shift of 0 and the high frequency gain is still kp t lead over t lag right it's a real number so a phase shift of 0 degrees right and this time well kp t lead over t lag is 10 so this corresponds to well 20 dBs over here and this is what you can observe in this body diagram well this configuration of the lead lag system with a lead that is higher than the lag time constant is often used in control we'll see that it's used in the well series PID controller because it can be used to lift the face right and this can be used to obtain a good face margin we can now have a look at the frequency response of the system that we had considered before it has a static gain of one and a time constant of three so at the denominator we have three s plus one and it's a lead lag system so at the numerator we have t lead s plus one we had considered this system for t lead is equal to one nine and minus one and we had looked at the step responses right and so what you can do as an exercise is well try to draw the frequency response of this system in the three cases you can print out the slide and do this as an exercise well if you have done the exercise this is how the frequency response should look like and to make it easy for you I've considered the separate effects of the lag system as you can see over here in dashed lines this is the effect of the lead system and you have the corresponding effects in the phase body diagram as you can see here you have the response for t lead is equal to one and as you can see the lag system will start to produce its effect at lower frequencies because this is here one over t lag and this is here one over t lead and now it's just a matter of combining things to obtain the frequency response here in green 
right both for the gain and for the phase shift here in sign in continuous lines you can see the approximation you can read the static gain when omega is tending to zero and here it is of course one so zero db and you can also read the high frequency gain when omega is tending to infinity and here it is kp the lead over the lag so one third in db this will be approximately minus 10 db well what you can see over here is the frequency response for t lead is equal to nine again you can see the separate effects of the lead and lag systems and here the lead system will produce its effect before the lag system so this is here one over t lead and this is 1 over t lag and now again it's just a matter of adding the effects and you obtain the frequency response in magenta you can read the high frequency gains at the high frequencies and this is again kp t lead over t lag so in this case it will be 3 and 20 log 10 of 3 that's in the neighborhood of 10 db let us now have a look at the frequency response of the lead lag system with value of the lead time constant minus one as you can see the fact that we have minus one here well does not affect the gain frequency response in the sense that well it will produce the same gain frequency response as the system with the lead is equal to one but of course there is a big difference as far as the phase shift is concerned because of this negative lead we will have a phase lag because of the lag time constant but also a phase lag because of the negative lead time constant so overall at the high frequencies will have a phase shift of minus 180 degrees this can also be well felt by considering the high frequency gain right and this can be read over here when the frequency is becoming high the high frequency gain is kp the lead over the lag and in this case it will be minus one third okay the minus here is leading to a phase shift of minus 180 degrees at the high frequencies and the one third is leading to this gain here 20 log 10 of one third and that's approximately minus 10 db you can of course obtain an approximate discrete time behavior of a lead lag system by using these numerical integration methods that have introduced earlier in the course so you could use the euler numerical integration methods or the trapezoidal method here in the next two slides i will use the euler numerical integration methods we have been doing something very similar for the first order system so this is the transfer function of the lead lag system if we are using the euler backward difference we have to inject this expression of z here in the transfer function so we replace s by this rational function of z if you do this you obtain the approximate discrete time description of the system using the euler backward difference approximation right then you can rewrite it in terms of the sampling period over the time constant okay and what is really interesting is to obtain the discrete time relation i will not go into the details because this is really similar to what i've done 
for the first order system and associated to this first order system there was an example of the implementation of the discrete time relation to program an FB for a first order system you can do something very similar of course for the lead lag system you can do something very similar using the Euler forward different approximation and this will result in a different discrete time relation right and again use this one with caution right because a stable system could suddenly become an unstable system in discrete time so with caution means that you have to use ts much smaller than t lag if you have to choose between the two methods of course choose the euler backward difference approximation 